rang his bell from his desk, and his servant came in. This is just an example of the strength of Prabhupada's mood. So the servant was supposed to do something that they had neglected to do. I can't remember what that something was. And Prabhupada's mood shifted just drastically from this very sharing with the devotees happily about the art and appreciating their service. And he became very, very strong with, this, with the, what was going on, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a whole background to neglect or something or something. Prabhupada was so strong. The devotee came in, paid obeisances, reported something. Prabhupada was so firm with him. And the mood of the, everybody in the room became so silent in response to Prabhupada's mood. And as soon as he left, Prabhupada withdrew that anger and was again the same, perfectly under control. Not that the anger controlled him, but he was, control, he was instructing his disciple with the use of that mood to stay properly situated in his devotion. And one other thing, just a, a little cultural point. As Prabhupada um, writes, he also does. Every, any situation that I was ever in with Prabhupada where he, persons would come for darshan or something, without fail there was always some arrangement for prasadam distribution. Even if it was something very simple, sometimes cut fruit, sometimes macadamia nuts, he would have his servants stay in the door. And I remember Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj describing the same thing in another time. But Prabhupada was so conscious of little things cultural points that as Western devotees if we have the right philosophy but the wrong behavior we still feel justified but Prabhupada was teaching in every respect about the, the culture of Krishna consciousness also <laughs> Prachu 